Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about the Gun Owners of America goals, which was a Gun Owners Advocacy and Leadership Summit uh, here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We just got done with day one, which is the Closed Media Range Day, and we're going to go over a few things that we uh, saw and pretty much everything that we've done today. So starting off, when we come uh, into the actual facility, we was uh, led into a pretty big field uh, here in uh, eastern Tennessee, uh, very similar to southeast Kentucky where we are normally from and uh, got to meet a lot of people, got to meet Clint, got to meet uh, a lot of guys in the gun industry that, uh, you know, we watch on TV every single day. And I'm, uh, I'm glad I could be a part of this because not only is it something good to get to meet a lot of guys in the industry, but it's also good to know that we have so many people that are backing our rights and are actually supporting us every single day as owners of guns in America. So let's go ahead and get into some of the things we've done today. So off the bat, uh, like I said, we come in, started talking with everybody. We had our prayer, uh, then we went in and started uh, getting ready for everything else that was gonna go on that day. Uh, they actually, very interesting thing. We started off and uh, they was like, you know, mad minutes getting ready to begin, everything else. And uh, they said, uh, I'm gonna sing the national anthem and at the end of the national anthem, whenever they said "Home of the Brave," we unloaded a uh, pretty much every single loaded gun on the range into the berm. So it was a uh, pretty, uh, pretty patriotic, if I do say so myself. Uh, after that, we then started with uh, on the main right-hand side, which was uh, the Q. So we started with the Honey Badger, shot it a little bit, uh, 300 blackout. Very interesting gun. Got to talk with Q just a little bit, but. With everything that was going on with the range and all that, it was kind of hard to have any one-on-one -on -one conversations, which everybody knows on a range day, it's pretty much just say hello, shoot the gun, and go on to the next table, and we handle most of the business the next day, which is going to be the closed media uh, day at the convention. So after that, we then went to uh, TSOS and uh, shot the Night Stalker. Very interesting, 2011, uh, a little, little bit lower end 2011, a little bit more affordable, not lower end per se, but affordable 2011, uh, nice shooting pistol, enjoyed it. Uh, after that, we shot the uh, Browning, I'm trying to think what it was. It was a uh, sort of clone of a Browning high power. The interesting gun, but I'm not really sure on the importer who actually imported them. So after that, we then went to Tarkov. We shot some of their shotguns, some of their semi-automatic shotguns. Um, got to shoot it, it was pretty smooth, but it would only shoot high brass. Uh, that low brass, it wouldn't really want to feed, but still an interesting shotgun. After that, we went to disavowed silencers and we shot uh, one of the 12 gauge uh, semi-automatic uh, magazine fed shotguns. I think it is the actual gun that was used in the John Wick series, if I'm not mistaken. I want to have to pick me up one of them because uh, I love my Benelli M4, but a mag-fed shotgun that that's, that is that smooth is bad, hard to beat. So after that, we then shot the Henry 4570 with the uh, disavowed uh, suppressor on it. So after that, then we shot the 308 rifle bolt action gun that they had with their suppressor on it as well. It sounded really good. But once again, with all the gunfire going on, it was kind of hard to really tell how well the suppressor was shooting. I'm glad I got to shoot it. It looks great, but this is stuff that we're going to have to go on further on and actually review in a closed environment to where there's not X factors of people shooting unsuppressed and suppressed guns across the range. But to my knowledge, it did shoot very well and sound very well. Uh, we shot their uh, 22 can as well with um, a uh, Glock 44-esque build. And I think they said it was like seven ounces altogether, their suppressor. Uh, and I mean, I'm telling you something, it felt like a toy. It was fun to shoot. But like I said, once again, this is stuff I'd like to pick up later on to do individual reviews on just so I can get a little bit better of a uh, grasp on how well these things shot or how well it, the actual suppressor shot. The next booth in line was SPT, which is more of a brake company or muzzle device company. They, uh, they take pride in actually uh, making muzzle devices that mitigate as much recoil as physically possible. We shot a automatic with uh, five rounds and felt pretty good. As you all know, I shoot automatics 24-7 and it was a 10-5, 10-3 build and it was very, uh, very controllable. Then uh, while I was shooting that or, you know, about to shoot it, talking to the guy about shooting it, uh, they had a 300 Winchester Magnum that led off to the left of me and I swear it about would chatter your teeth. 
That being said, though, we then shot that, and I'm telling you something, for that being a 300 Winchester Magnum, uh, it had almost zero recoil. I think they actually said, if I could hear them correctly, once again, gunfire everywhere, 85% uh, recoil uh, reduction just with their uh, muzzle brake. So that's pretty, pretty insane. We then went to DSARMS SA58 FAL, uh, DSARMS.com. Uh, we shot their FAL, which I'm glad to see. Uh, I haven't really even got to shoot a FAL much, and uh, I'm glad to see somebody's actually producing them. Very good looking rifle and function pretty flawlessly, so that was interesting in itself. Then got to shoot the lead and steel Promethean, which I've done a full review on with that. Uh, pretty much same as always, but anytime I can get an automatic gun in my hands, I always love to fire them. So I picked it up, fired a little bit, and then we went on to uh, the, uh, I think it's the Pandora's box or the, uh, it's whatever their enclosed reticle is. I'm not for certain, but uh, it done fine as well. I think it was on APC-9. I've had one of them before, but in itself, the reticle looked good. Continued on from there. Then we went to Brown Ales. Uh, so we talked a little bit about the upcoming meltdown that we had. Uh, got to talk with Caleb a little bit, and we got to shoot the BRM-4 with the 10.5-inch barrel, and the gun felt great, ran flawlessly once again. Just a very interesting uh, setup that they have, and I'm interested uh, to see what you all think about our BRM-4 meltdown that we've got coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. After that, we went to Matador Arms. They had their uh, direct blowback 9 millimeter. I think sub one hundred or one thousand uh, dollar PCC setup. It's pretty interesting. We're going to be visiting them again tomorrow. Uh, like to see what you all think about it. Very interesting build. It was actually a uh, SD type of build. Actually had the suppressor underneath the handguards. Sounded great. Uh, felt good. But once again, Drake blowbacks. You all know. You know it's going to have a little bit more of a kick to it uh, than a SP5, MP5, this, that, and the other but interesting build for a sub $1,000 gun, full ambi lower, full ambi controls, um, felt really good. So we're going ahead and go on to the next one. So then we went to Smith & Wesson, got to shoot their lever action 45 long coat, very beautiful gun and functioned flawlessly as well. Um, I don't know if I short stroke it or what, but we had one malfunction while, the, uh, while in the middle of shooting it uh, to where I ejected a live round, but besides that though, everything shot great with it. We shot their uh, Shield Plus uh, carry comp, uh, the Shield 9, I think, is what it's a technical term of it is, carry comp, and it shot very good as well. That comp, you can tell, actually reduces recoil pretty well, which we also have uh, reviewed the full-sized carry comp already, and uh, everything else on the table we've either already reviewed or um, we already have a review coming out for it, so we'll continue on from there. Then went to one of the more uh, interesting ones I've seen. I had never actually even heard of this company before, but they had like a Mark 18-esque build, if the easiest way to ex uh, explain it, but it's called Samurai Firearms out of uh, Hardingstonsburg, West Virginia, if I'm pr pronouncing that correctly, Hardingstonsburg, West Virginia. I think they says like 50 miles away from ATF, but one of the cooler designs I've seen of today. Um, I love their emblem on it as well. That's something that we need to get in contact with them because uh, it's a gun that interested me. I think it's like $2,400, but at the same time, a uh, very beautiful gun, ran smooth as butter, and we're going to have to get back in contact with them because I was very, uh, uh, very impressed with it. Going on from there, we went to uh, Warwick Tactical, which is a 2011-based company, uh, more of the run and gun 2011s instead of the tactical vibe of them, but uh, shot great had no uh, malfunction or anything like that, had a uh, $3,000 price point on them, uh, very smooth action on them, but once again, it's more of guns that you can't really get much out of by just shooting five rounds down range. But uh, we got their card, more than likely get in contact with them later to see if they want to send one out to the channel for us to do a full review on. After that, then we stopped at Holosun, got to check out the 509T, which we currently have, we're going to be doing a full review on sooner or later, or at least featuring it in one of our other firearm reviews. Uh, I got to see the EPS carry, EPS um, uh, non-carry, I guess, or just full size, either way you want to put it. Got to shoot some of their um, actual rifle reticles as well. Uh, just good day with Holosun. Got to make some good uh, <clears throat> good connections there. So we then went and shot uh, two more AR-15s. They're like a little bit custom AR-15s. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't get the company's name. I know I should have, but at the same time, once again, pretty hectic day. 
um, very tied in together and uh, I've done the best that I could with the uh, time that I was given. So hopefully you all can recognize what AR-15s these are uh, and you can comment in the comment section below and let me know what you all think about them. But either way, very interesting builds. Uh, even though they're not ambidextrous or anything like that, they're made out of uh, mainly billet steel. They're made in the USA, and um, they just looked really good and shot pretty good as well. But we will continue on from there to the uh, Henry Booth. Uh, we shot the Mare's Leg and 357 Magnum 38 Special. Very, very fun gun to shoot. After that, we then went to the uh, Henry Revolver. That's the first time I'd ever actually felt one in person and got to shoot it. Um, smooth double action, smooth single action. I do think that they need to extend the hammer though on that uh, pistol because as you, if you can see me shooting it right now, uh, you can tell that I kind of trip up a little bit while trying to cock it in single action. But overall, very smooth gun uh, in double and single action and accurate as well. So I also got to shoot the Henry uh, 357 Magnum uh, suppressed uh, tactical gun they got. We actually have the 4570 version and we will be doing a full review on it very soon. Uh, some great guys at Henry got to talk to them for a long time. Uh, Kyle even got to shoot the uh, lever action 556 that they have and it was a pretty interesting gun. The only thing that I wish they'd done is instead of it being like a five, uh, five round box mag that it was actually a AR-15 magazine fed uh, lever action that would have made it a little bit more cool. We then stopped by IWI, checked them out for a little bit, got to shoot the Glill in 556, it shot good, a little bit more recoil than what I was expecting with it but once again they're pretty much bomb proof. So it is what it is. Uh, they also had Hollow Suns on them. Got to shoot the IWI Tavor, which you all know I'm a huge fan of the Tavor. It's pretty much my going out of state gun. That's what I carry anytime I go out of the state of Kentucky just because it's short as the MK18 but has a 16 and a half inch barrel. Love my Tavors, can't say nothing bad about them at all. Then went to Anderson, got to shoot the Dissipator which 16 inch rifle length gas system. Uh, shot pretty good as well. We checked out their fully automatic uh, that they had there, just fully automatic, and it shot fine, pretty smooth as well. Then went to Dead Air, we shot the uh, FNX 45 with their 45 uh, can on it, and it was, from what I could tell, once again, gunfire everywhere, but it was very quiet. I know my mic does a pretty good job at picking it up, but my mic could hear more pretty much than I could at that point being, but uh, done a great job with it. Got to shoot their 22 mask at can, and once again, can't really hear much, but it was fun to shoot. We then went to uh, Bond Arms, and I got to shoot their lever action uh, 223 556 that does take an AR-15 mag. And yes, I know I'm holding it incorrectly in the video, but at the same time, the rail in the barrel was about so hot that it was burning you whenever you put your hand out there, so we done the best that we could at that point being. But Thinking outside the box with a lever action uh, magazine fed 22 that not only takes 30 round mags, 40 round mags, D60s, whatever you want to throw in it, um, I think it's very interesting design and I'd like to actually check one of them out and get a full review on the channel for one of them. Then got to shoot their uh, 45 long coat, or not uh, 45 long coat or 410 uh, under over uh, single action pistol that they had. Uh, very interesting gun. Uh, didn't hurt my wrist or nothing like that. I was really wanting to shoot their 4570 Cyclops or their 500 Smith & Wesson, but they actually said that they had put so many rounds down range in the last few weeks that uh, the firing pin inside had broke. So it actually broke while they was on the range that day. So sadly, we didn't get to shoot it, but we did get to shoot uh, some of their uh, 45 uh, Lone Colt 410 shotgun and also at the same time 45 ACP. So pretty nice guns overall. So while we was also shooting the Bond Arms, uh, we also run into Fort Scott Munitions. Got to shoot some of his 45 uh, long call, or 45 ACP in the Bond Arms. Uh, also got to shoot some of his uh, 8.6 blackout, I think is what he was saying, was which is what the uh, uh, lever, act, or not lever action, but the bolt action gun I'm running right now in the video. Uh, everything shot good. We're gonna probably be checking him out come tomorrow, uh, seeing if he'd like to check into sponsoring any of our ammunition for some more reviews. That way we can get a little bit better of an idea of some of his stuff, but very interesting company and very nice guy to talk to. Got to stop by Glock, talked to them for a little bit. Um, got to shoot the 10 millimeter 20, uh, Glock 20 Gen 5 again. Um, once again, I'm a huge fan of 10 millimeter. So we called a ceasefire on the range at that point and we didn't get to go to, um, 
it's the custom one of the custom Glock companies. I've shot a few of them. They actually come to Center Target once beforehand, so I really wouldn't see much nothing there. Um, then Optics Plant was our thing, and we got to talk to my guy Derek, and we're getting ready to go out and eat with them for a little bit. But overall, guys, very interesting range day. Um, I'm glad once again that we got to be a part of this, and I'm uh, interested to see what tomorrow holds. So, guys, if you haven't uh, checked in to coming at the GOA convention that's going to be this coming Friday and Saturday, uh, make sure you do because these guys not only are protecting our rights as uh, Second Amendment advocates, but they're also some very great guys. And once again, you might just see some faces like mine and other guys down there. And once again, we've just had a great time today, and I want to thank everybody for inviting us. And once again, guys, we'll keep you updated with how tomorrow goes. So once again, appreciate y'all viewing as always. Like and subscribe for more gun reviews, and I'll see y'all in the next video. <laughs>